Hello class. So this lesson is 5.5 .5 power. Power is sort of the next step from energy. It's um, the rate at which energy is transferred. So we've got all our different types of energy. The energy is changing from one form to another, and power is how fast that happens, the rate at which energy is transferred. Our equation here is P is equal to W net, so the network, divided by delta T. And we can write that as delta E over delta T. Because remember, the network is equal to the change in energy. Okay, we have units here. Well, let's see. We have energy over time, so that's going to be joules per second. And we have an, a special name for that. That's called the watt, which is W. Watt. And again, that's named after a famous physicist. So power is how fast energy is being transferred. Let's try one of these problems. It says, how much power does a swimmer produce if she transforms 2.4 kilojoules of chemical energy in food into kinetic energy and thermal energy in 12 and a half seconds? So she uses up that much energy. The change in energy here, delta E, is equal to 2.4 kilojoules. The change in time, delta T, is 12.5 seconds. And our equation is P is equal to delta T over delta T. Delta E over delta T. We can plug in our numbers here. P is equal to 2.4 kilojoules over 12.5 seconds. Now we have to be careful. Kilojoules, we need to convert into joules before we can really go forward. So that's 2,400 joules over 12.5 seconds. And that gives us 190 watts. That's how much power was used. We have another problem here. A 64 kilogram student climbs from the ground floor to the second floor of his school in 5.5 seconds. The second floor is 3.7 meters above the ground floor. What is the student's power? Okay, how much power is used to change that energy? So again, power is the change in energy over the change in time. And our change in time is 5.5 .5 seconds. To find the change in energy, well, let's see. We're not told anything about his kinetic energy, but we know that he's changing gravitational potential energy. So we have the final gravity minus the initial gravitational energy. That's going to be his change in energy. Notice there isn't always going to be an answer, maybe it's kinetic energy that's changing, maybe it's gravitational. You need to read the problem to see what's happening. Okay, in this case we're changing gravitational energy, which means here that uh, we're going from the ground floor, we'll say that's zero joules of gravitational energy. So delta E becomes mgh, that's how much energy he's gaining. So 64 times 9.8 times the height 3.7 meters. And this gives us 2320 joules. That's our change in energy, which means that our power is, well, it's delta E over delta T. So 2320 over 5.5. .5. This gives us 420 watts. So that student has 420 watts of power when they are changing that energy. Now the student runs back down the stairs in 2.25 seconds. What is the power in this case? Well, we have P is delta E over delta T. In this case, they're running back down the stairs. So delta E, they're changing their energy back down by 2320. They ra rose up that much, then they're reducing it again. So negative 2320 joules. That's their change in energy now. And delta T is equal to 2.25 seconds. So we can say here P 
is equal to negative 2320 over 2.25 seconds, which is negative 1031 watts. And we can write that as negative 1.0 times 10 to the 3 watts. Or another way we can write that is negative 1.0 kilowatts. So there we go, that's how much power is involved. They're losing that much power in this case. So we use power to describe electrical devices a lot. Electrical power, when we have a laptop, when we have um, a refrigerator, when we have any of these devices, they consume power. And the power rating of an object is the maximum power of an electric device. Electronic devices don't always consume a constant amount of power. The power rating is the maximum that they can consume. So think about when your laptop is really, really overworked. It's doing as much stuff as it can all at once. It's getting really hot. The power rating is how much power is it using in that case. Okay, and um, our energy transformed, we can have an equation for that from our previous equation. If we rearrange the power equation, we can get delta E is equal to power times delta T. So if it's operating at its maximum power for some amount of time, we can figure out how much energy it's consuming. This example says, what is the power of an electrical elevator motor if it uses 2.9 times 10 to the 5 joules of electrical energy to lift an elevator car 12 meters in 16 seconds. Well, P is equal to delta E over delta T. It's no different from any of these other questions that we had. Um, we're told it, it uses 2.9 times 10 to the 5, so delta E is 2.9 times 10 to the 5 joules, and delta T is 16 seconds. And we're told it lifts at 12 meters. We don't care. That doesn't really matter for this problem at all. The power is equal to 2.9 times 10 to the 5 over 16 seconds. This gives us 18.125 watts. And if we use the right significant digits, this gives us 18 kilowatts. Okay, that's our power in that situation. On the next page, you'll see that we have a few common appliances, of the laptop, vacuum, these sorts of things. And just to give you an idea of how much power all these different um, devices use. So a laptop, fairly small, 20 to 75 watts. A vacuum cleaner, larger, 200 to 700. A microwave, 600 to 1500. A dishwasher, 1,200 to 1,500. A fridge, well, that's actually only 100 to 500, so it's lower than some of those ones before. And this last one, a stove, 6,000 to 10,000. That one definitely uses the most uh, power. So you don't need to memorize these either. It's just to give you an idea of different devices and their power ratings. At your home, wherever you're living right now, your home has an electricity meter somewhere in it. And that's how Ontario Hydro knows how much money to charge you. It measures how much energy you use. So this measures your house's energy uses, energy usage, in kilowatt hours. Now this is a funny new unit for energy. So it's still energy. Remember energy normally we talk about joules. But power is measured in watts or kilowatts and if we multiply power times time we get energy. Here we have kilowatts times hours. Power times time. So it's still 
the same um, idea. It's still a measure of energy, but it's a different unit than joules. And sometimes it's more useful. We'll see it being used. The other thing that we have here is Energide. And Energide are um, labels on appliances in Canada that tell you their efficiency. And we have a picture of an Energide label here. You can see there's all sorts of information on it, but the main important thing here is this number, 554 kilowatt hours, and this little arrow here. You see the little black triangle. Those are the two important things on an Energide label. Every appliance you buy, if you buy a, a large appliance in Canada, it always has something like this on it. It tells you how much energy it uses per year, and it tells you on a scale how efficient is it. So you can see that this black arrow points at this point on this scale. And you can see that the scale starts to the left here and ends to the right there. And so you can see that it's fairly efficient. If you go to the left, things are getting more and more and more efficient. So on the left, that's the devices that use the least possible energy. So it's saying, in this case, for all dishwashers, which dishwashers use the least amount of energy? And where is this dishwasher on a scale of efficient to not efficient? That's what Energide tells us. OK, we'll do a couple more examples here. So this one says, what is the cost of operating a 25-watt light bulb four hours a day for six days if the price of electrical energy is five cents per kilowatt hour? All right. So first off, we need to figure out how much energy this is using. We've got delta E is equal to P delta T. Now delta T, our time, is equal to four hours times six days. So we end up getting 24 hours total. That's how long it's operating. Now we have our delta T. So delta E is um, our power, which was 25 watts, times 24 hours. And we're going to get 600 watt hours. You see how we had watts times hours. And if I convert that to kilowatt hours, I get 0 0.6 kilowatt hours. That's our energy. And if we want to figure out our cost, well, the cost is equal to the price times the amount of energy. So we have a price here of 5 cents per kilowatt hours. So our price is five cents per kilowatt hour, and then we have 0 0.6 kilowatt hours that we're using. And that gives us a grand total of three cents, which is pretty cheap. Doesn't cost very much. Okay, so now we're going to look at a larger scale. If we have 20 incandescent light bulbs, they're all turned on for 12 hours a day for an entire year to light up a store. Each bulb has a power rating of 100 watts and the average cost of electricity is six cents per kilowatt hour. Now we want to calculate the cost of lighting the store for a year. So again, we need to start with our energy. Energy is equal to P delta T. And we're going to uh, figure out first our power. Well, power is equal to, we've got 100 watts times 20 light bulbs. We've got 20 light bulbs all operating at 100 watts. This is 2 kilowatts total. And our delta T, well, we have 12 hours a day times 365 days. This gives us 4,380 hours. So then we can calculate our delta E. It's equal to 2 kilowatts times 4380 hours, and that gives us 8,760 kilowatt hours. 
That's our energy. We want to figure out the cost. So cost is going to be the amount of energy times our price. This gives us 8,760 kilowatt hours times 6 cents per kilowatt hour. Gives us a grand total of $525.60 for the whole store for one year. Okay, so that's uh, a lot more than our three cents that we saw in the previous question. Now this last problem says, how much money could be saved by using compact fluorescent light bulbs, that's CFLs. So these are the, they look like regular light bulbs except they're fluorescent bulbs. So if we use those, they have a power rating of 23 watts instead of the other ones which had a power rating of 100 watts. If we use these, how much money could we save? Well, notice that um, our power rating went into the problem here before. So that was in power, we multiply that by time, then we multiply that by price. So I can take my final price, $525.60, I can divide that by um, 100 watts per light bulb, and then I can multiply that by the new amount, 23 watts per light bulb, and this is going to give me my new price. So I've got 525.60 divided by 100 times 23 gives me $120.89. That's our new price. Um, this is the new price, and we're asking how much could be saved. So savings, in this case, is going to be our original price, 525 525 60 minus 120.89. So let's see how much we saved. 525.60 minus 120.89 gives us 404.71. That's our savings. All right, that's the lesson. There's your homework problems. Good luck and have fun.